One of the most gruesome sights in Japanese history is hiding in plain sight. It's this shrine right here, Yoshiwara Benten, where hundreds drowned, burned to death, or were boiled alive. But to fully grasp how it happened, we first need to understand what the place called Yoshiwara was. My name is Michelle, you're watching Tokyo Pass 3, and today we're looking into the Yoshiwara Pleasure District. Hi everyone, welcome back to Tokyo Pass 3. If you're new to this channel, I make videos about Japan travel and lifestyle. So if you like what you see today, please consider subscribing. So we're talking about a historical place today and one of the challenges that comes with it is that it's difficult to do in video form, especially when uh, a lot of the structures then are no longer there. So the way I'm going about this is for the first part when I'm talking about what Yoshiwara was like at its peak, I'm going to show you ukiyo-e or woodblock paintings from the time. And then later in the video, I'll show you some clips of what Yoshiwara looks like today. So bear with me as I tell you the first part of the story in ukiyo-e form. They say sex work as a profession as old as time. The pursuit of carnal pleasures is a basic instinct for humans, after all. In Japan, one particular pleasure district reached worldwide fame for its allure, the floating world of Yoshiwara. Yoshiwara started out as an idea pitched by a brothel keeper who somehow convinced authorities that the best way to temper vice and prevent it from muddling public morality is to contain it into a single pleasure quarter. In reality though, he was only seeking to monopolize the trade and as self-serving as his intent was, his pitch actually worked. His request was granted and Yoshiwara came to existence in 1613. Now how does one create a secluded pleasure quarter in 17th century Japan? Similar to castles, Yoshiwara was surrounded by a moat. This map here shows the district's layout, the streets follow the grid design, and this thick lining here signifies the high fenced walls. To enter Yoshiwara, one must go through the only way in and out, the big gate known as Yoshiwara Omon. The entry is also marked by a willow tree, fondly dubbed as Mikairi Yanagi, or the looking back willow tree. This is where a patron would look back with longing after a night of indulging in pleasure. This mode structure benefits Yoshiwara in many ways. For one, it's easier for the guards to keep tabs of who comes in and out. The distinct borders also make the district appear more exclusive. Last but not the least, this structure makes sure that the women of Yoshiwara stay inside its walls. Many of the women here did not come out of their own volition after all. And because there's only one gate with high fence walls, escaping would be out of the question. Now, you must be wondering what makes Yoshiwara such a famed and longed for destination during its time. In Buddhism, there is a term called ukiyo, which means sorrowful world. It highlights the impermanence of worldly things as humans go through the cycle of birth and rebirth. This word was appropriated by the people of Yoshiwara, retaining the sound, but changing the kanji so that it means floating world instead. Like its Buddhist origin, this word also signified the fleeting quality of life, but instead of focusing on sorrow, it adopted a hedonist approach. Life is fleeting, so why not indulge in unbridled joy? As such, this word came to capture the very essence of Yoshiwada. Once Yoshiwada experience is as deep as their pockets go, customers with money to burn are treated to an elaborate experience, starting with a feast. Gestures, geisha, and attendants serve and entertain him. Once the night deepens, the customer is led to another house where his companion for the night awaits. He can either choose one from a group in display or the house chooses one for him. It's here where he spends the night giving into the flesh, his length of stay also determined by the money in his pocket. Now, this all sounds great for the customers, but what about the sex workers? What were their lives like? When we look at depictions of Yoshiwara courtesans in popular media today, we often see the typical strong female character who somehow knows how to make powerful men bend according to her whims. But the life of a Yoshiwara courtesan was hardly like that. The courtesans of Yoshiwara were divided into several ranks, the most lowly among which is called Yujo, the quick and easy fix for poor men in need. 
On the other end of the scale, the highest ranking were called oiran. Distinguished for their top class social and art skills. Now, it's important to note here that very few made it to Oiran status. Even fewer managed to actually wield power. In fact, many of the women in Yoshiwara started out as girls sold by their parents for money. And because the brothel keeper paid for them, they are in debt. And the rules behind this debt are inhumane, and it's typical for a woman in Yoshiwara to remain in debt for the rest of her life. No matter how hard she worked, she couldn't really buy her way out. The lifespan of a Yoshiwara oiran was also fairly short. It was common to contract sexual diseases and die, or to give in to existential depression and just end your suffering yourself. Even in death, these women were treated like objects. Oftentimes, their dead bodies were wrapped in cloth and then hurled over the walls of Jokanji Temple during the hours of the morning. The monks are then left to find dead bodies and perform funeral rites without a name to mark their graves. For this reason, this temple was nicknamed Nagikomidera or the Throwaway Temple. Perhaps the event that highlights the tragic fate of Yoshiwara women the most is the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923. Described as one of the world's worst natural disasters of the early 20th century, the Great Kanto Earthquake devastated Tokyo and Yokohama with a magnitude 7.9 earthquake which was followed by a fire that swept across prefectures. An estimated 140,000 lives were lost in the disaster, including the women of Yoshiwara who were trapped in a fiery hell. Remember how I said there was only one gate? Yeah, that's not very good in a disaster. People were stampeding to get their way out, and those who tried to avoid getting crushed there made their way to Yoshiwara Benten where there was a pond. But unfortunately, most of the people who came here drowned or were boiled alive because everything was on fire. Here's the thing though, although the disaster almost obliterated Yoshiwara, the district actually recovered. In fact, it was only in 1958 that the district closed down for good because the anti-prostitution law of Japan was introduced. So what remains of Yoshiwara today? The place where it once was can be found north of Asakusa in an area called Senzoku Yonchome. And while not as grand or famous as it used to be, it's still a red light district. Soap plants and other shops offering adult services stand here. Japanese laws define prostitution as compensated penetrative sex, so as long as these businesses don't engage in that, they're technically legal. I do have to say that while there are other neighborhoods in Tokyo that engage in similar activities, for example, Kabukicho in Shinjuku, Senzoku is probably the scariest one I've passed through. There were barkers standing on every corner of the street I passed by, and they were giving me scary looks. Probably because I didn't look like a potential customer and I was carrying a small piece of camera around, so uh, one of them even crossed the street and kind of tailed me a little bit probably to scare me off, and I just walked faster and he was gone, so. In this neighborhood, you will still find a place called Yoshiwara Omon, where the Great Gate was, but now there's no gate, it just leads to an open area. The latest incarnation of the Great Willow Tree, where patrons mourn the end of their visit, is still there, although it hardly stands out as a landmark. The moat that separated the floating world of Yoshiwara from the rest of Edo is no longer there, but a fraction of the wall remains, unmarked, hiding coyly in asphalt that you wouldn't even know its historical significance unless you happen to stumble upon it on Google Maps. Jokanji Temple, where so many bodies of nameless women were buried by monks after they were tossed over the walls, still thrives. By the entrance is a sign explaining its nickname as Nage Komidera. And the pond where so many people lost their lives, only a portion of it remains, located in what is now called Yoshiwara Benten Shrine. At the center stands a tall statue of the Goddess of Mercy, as if protecting the spirits of the nameless women who spent their lives trapped in Yoshiwara until the end. Okay, time for some thoughts and reflection. 
For me, there was always something that drew me to Yoshiwara even back when I only knew of it as Edo's red light district. And as I began researching for this video, I understood why. Yoshiwara tells the story of trapped women, women who struggled to find meaning in their lives in the very small world that they lived in. I was trapped in unfavorable circumstances, which I managed to get out of through hard work. And I was able to do so because I live in a time where women can and have some ability to better their circumstances. The women of Yoshiwara hardly stood a chance. As a Filipino in Japan, I also sometimes meet men who, upon hearing my nationality, would assume that I work in the sex trade because historically, people from my country have done so. That's why there are a lot of Philippine pubs in Japan. Honestly, I used to be offended by this, not so much for the work that they think I did, but for the contempt that I could see in their eyes, as if I were someone of lower status that they could just buy off for the money. My view of sex work has also changed over time. There are women these days who actively engage in the industry not because they feel like they have no other options left, but because they feel like they are in charge of their sexuality and they're making money off it. And honestly, I respect that. It's a hard job to do some Thing that I definitely can't and it's fulfilling a need that's why it's one of the oldest professions in history I'm but a mere outsider but if there's anything that I wish would change it's that I hope the industry evolves to become not just female friendly but more female led after all most of the services conducted in the industry are by women so it's only right that women wield the power as well that's just wishful thinking on my part but I'm putting it out there maybe it'll come true someday and on that note, I'm ending today's Tokyo Pass 3 video. I hope you found it as interesting as I did. It was really fun to see the places as they are now and looking into what the life of a courtesan was like. And if you found this video interesting, there are references for further reading in the description box. This has been Michelle for Tokyo Pass 3. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye! This is my new apartment, by the way. Luna is still here. Oh, Luna is now. <laughs> Sorry, Luna. Okay.